I'm Lynn Lawrence. I'm Alan Colbert. Oh, I, I was born, born and raised in Pasadena. Okay. Born and raised, went to all the public schools in Pasadena, and uh, including the Pasadena City College cosmetology program. And so all, all of my life, I uh, well, lived here. So I grew up in Southern Monk. Oh, okay. So uh, my parents came here in 1944, about one and a half. And uh, my experience prior to uh, hair was I was in the grocery business for over 15 years. I went from bagging groceries all the way up to store manager for a market. So I had business experience. Uh, I went into the military uh, as a dental assistant in the military. I came out. And, uh, you know, it just wasn't the same in the grocery business. I had to start at the bottom again, so I wasn't very happy with that. So I'd always liked to brush my mother's hair and my sister's hair. So I went to beauty college when I got out of the military. I was GI Bill. And I uh, got my license in 1969. And uh, I held on to that license, went back into the market, and went all the way up to store manager. And then after that, I moved to Altadena. That was in the 70s, the early 70s. Al and I met down the street. He was working at a salon called La Danae's down the street. Right, right, right. He was the manager. <laughs> <laughs> I was the manager down there. This, this, this you know, young gentleman comes up the street in his, in his, in his jeans and uh, a bag over his shoulder looking for, looking for a gig. And uh, so he came in and we interviewed him. And, uh, he, uh, myself, and the owner of the salon, and uh, and determined that he was a good a good fit, and and we hired him. Uh, this is this was back in 1976, I think. Right, something about 76. And from there, uh, things went back and forth. You know, we had some some success over there. Lynn 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 came into the salon, into that particular salon, with with a vision. He wanted to open up a beauty salon here in, in Altadena. You know, I was young. I was like 19 years old. I was living home with my mama. <laughs> and so I, that was far removed from my, my, my mind. But he, he, had a, he had a vision. So he was in pursuit of that. <clears throat> we worked together. We, we, uh, uh, from that point forward, I think we got involved in some haircutting classes. Yeah, I got insulted. <laughs> I, I wouldn't sell that by the owner of the slide. She said, but I couldn't cut. You know, I couldn't cut hair. So, you know, I, I just went to Beverly Hills and started taking these haircutting classes prior to Alan. And uh, I went down there. You know, we go down every week. And uh, I went down every week to haircutting classes in Beverly Hills. And pretty soon I invited Alan, and we both went down to Beverly Hills. Well, it wasn't quite he invited me. I, <laughs> what happened? You kind of I, I was jumped like, into I was it. like, what? Well, what you doing? What you doing? What what you, doing? doing? <laughs> you know, he told me he was having taking a haircut class. But I said, "Well, can I go?" <laughs> you know. And then we started going out there. Yeah, we went out there for an entire year. A year. Entire a year. Whole year. Yeah, was it a program? Or was that was it? a. It was a salon owner out there. Uh, Sammy's, Sammy's of Beverly, Beverly Hills. Hills. Oh. Yeah. And he was. He, I think he was involved in the idea of franchising salons and stuff like that. Yeah. And so we just kind of got in on that stream and uh, and started taking haircut classes through him. And the whole concept and idea of the salon came from that experience. And, and uh, after that period of time, uh, Lynn continued in, 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 in his pursuit, because I, I still wasn't clear on that yet. I was, you know, I was comfortable. I was like, I'm, I'm living home with my mother, so I'm, I don't have no bills, I have nothing to worry about. I was in my married, 30s. He's a married man. But there's a different know. teens in his, <clears throat> his teens. I was in my 30s, so. Our thinking was not exactly the same. Not quite, you know. Exactly the same. Just not uh, thinking the same. Yeah. Right, right. Well, one thing we had, we did have in common, we both loved the idea of hair and, and the beauty business, and also, too, the idea of doing something unique in, 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 the, in the industry. And so that we had that alignment. I was in the store, working from midnight, working from 3 to midnight. And I went from right down Crenshaw Boulevard, and I passed the salon, and I saw these guys coming out of the salon. And the guys had suits on. The hairdressers had suits on, and they got into Rolls Royces. 
I've never heard this story. Okay. <laughs> okay. This, Jerry Jackson. I remember him. Okay. Name. Jerry Jackson on Crinter. I was working the night shift. I kept passing by there. And they got on these cars and they were working on pretty women. I saw pretty women coming <laughs> out. <of> <laughs> I was like, hmm, that's a win. <laughs> that was for me. Okay? <laughs> That's what it works. It works. That worked for me. I said you can make a lot of money. You can wear nice suits and stuff, and, and get into a run, nice car and Rolls Royce and, and be around yeah, pretty wow. women there all day long. That was for me. So that's part of what got me in this business. Okay. Now actually, what our marketing plan was to bring the Beverly Hills atmosphere to Altadena, so that people. The fluent people and people that wanted more in life mm -hmm. uh, wouldn't have to go all the way to, to Beverly Hills. Mm -hmm. So we bring Beverly Hills atmosphere here. Mm -hmm. So and that's a way I think that we stand above most of the salons, or our thinking was above most of the salons in the city. And it worked. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It was working. Mm -hmm. And that was. It was standing room only. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah for, for many, many years. Yeah. And that was uh, something that. Uh, <clears throat> Um, kind of resonated throughout the, the community. It was like, you know, they're, they're, you know we, we got a whole lot of negative tags that was so The bougie salon. Yeah, the bougie salon associated to what we were doing up here because what we were doing was, it was different. We were, we were training. We, we, we got, one of the things that we came up with early on was that, uh, Matt Thing Lynn had said it himself. He said, in order for us to be, to sustain ourselves, we have, we have to duplicate ourselves. And we duplicate, we duplicate ourselves through, through others. So we had to, we had to uh, we started a training program of teaching folks how to do what we what we did, and and uh, presenting the different styles and looks and things that, that that were unique to what was going on around around the town, and uh, and became you know pretty successful with that. That was uh, that was our that was our edge. Mm -hmm. I think that was that edge on the market. So we developed a, a Lawrence and Colbert press, a right. Lawrence and Colbert blow dry. The way we blow dry. Right. Uh, uh, at the time, there was a lot of relaxed, everybody had relaxers and they were using electric iron and stuff and they were damaging their hair, so that allowed them only to go back to press and curl. Mm -hmm. So we had to develop a system to make press and curl look as good as or better than a relaxer. And we did that with the system that we developed, or it's a cool to develop the right. system of blow drying and pressing, etc. You know, it's not just that, it was conditioning. Yes. We were using, you know, uh, really good products, right. Redken and and we were using something before that one. Jeremac. Jeremac. We were using Jeremac, yeah. Jeremac. Their products were made by the same company that Redken Redken made their products. Mm -hmm. So we used the high quality products and used the, uh, you know, just use the natural hair and condition it properly. Give it your science. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's part of our system. We develop a manual, salon manual, as far as uh, training. Uh, we had a salon manual that we trained up our personnel. Of course, uh, we have people that left here and open salons in other cities right. that are doing quite well. We have somebody you know, in Santa Barbara and Ohio and you know, different places you know, around the city. A lot of people have come through Lawrence and Covert have opened salons. So it's like a training center. Well, my vision, actually, my original vision was to have a, a Lawrence and Covert in every major city in the United States. Uh, that's good if you can reproduce yourself. There, there's a problem in reproducing business-minded people. It's not just the art of, of, of hair. It's the business and the art to duplicate. You know, like being here, I was here at six o'clock, been here at six o'clock every day, six days a week. That part of the business I was trying to teach, I was. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and to be on time, you know, things like that. And the most important thing right. of business, in my opinion, is to provide the consumer with a product or a service when the consumer wants it. Mm -hmm. Not when I get ready to give it to them. So that's where we fail a lot of times. I think we as a people fail a lot of times. So when we go into business, we don't give the consumer what the consumer wants. We kind of, and we don't do it with business. Business is business. I don't care right. whether it's the hair business, Correct. the beauty business, it's all business. 
So it really is the same. And it's hard to sell that to artists. It's right. very difficult to teach that to artists. As a matter of fact, I didn't want to even be put in that category. I want to be put in the category as businessmen. Right. I came from a business right. background, totally. Mm -hmm. You know, market and grocery stores. And you know, one of the, in, 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 in jumping on top of that, one of the things you notice that from that perspective is that the ones who have made the, the big money in this industry are business people. They're not, they're not artists. The, 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 these couple, we call it those, uh, um, it's Fantastic Sam's and all, the, all, 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 these, all these franchises that are, they, they don't know anything about hair, but they know, but they know business. And so I, over the years I've had to embrace my partner here because you know I came in totally uh, uh, um, ill-equipped to be able to uh, uh, receive that that early on, you know, and uh, um, and but I came to understand that this is very important, you know, because like I say, he, he came up with a business background, business understanding, and and made that application to what we were doing here, and uh, I was resistant for a period of time. I was not a youngster, you know, and I, I grew and I grew, you know, from that point forward, and. Uh, I you know, have to applaud him in, in, in that because even still today, he's still that same person. And that consistency is something that carries over. And uh, uh, it, like I said, it, it resonates in, in business in general. Right here, Lawrence and Colbert has existed since uh, September the 14th, 1978. And so we've been here, uh, we started we didn't start with all the space that we have now. We started with 750 square feet. Now it's 2,200 square feet. But we added on as as we uh, as business progressed. We added space. That's awesome. So prior to him leaving, it was 2,200 square feet. Yeah. And no. Um, I know I am. I'm a part of Lawrence Colbert. Yes, you are. He's Colbert. I'm, I'm, I'm Colbert. Like I said, I'm always, I will always be a part of Lawrence and Colbert. Uh, just physically, I'm not, I'm not here. Um, There's a Colbert I, studio. Yeah, I have a, a Colbert Studios oh, in, in Pasadena. Yeah. Which is good. Yeah. And, yeah, and that's just you know the, my own personal expression. And, uh, so I've personally have been in the industry for 40 years. A long time. Uh, since 1976. That's, that's ongoing. That's, that, that's something that you gotta, you gotta Beauty is beauty. Yeah. yeah. And that's one thing that's, it's like going to a grocery store. You gotta eat. Mm -hmm. Well, women and men have to keep themselves situated so they can even attract a mate, right? So it's nothing, there's no lull in this business unless you want it to lull. Okay? Because there's always 37 million people in California, for mm -hmm. instance. <laughs> in 30, this is the <laughs> most populated state in the United States. So it's peaks and valleys don't have to be there. You make the peak and you make the valley. It was all mostly commissioned when we first started. Oh. Uh, when we had, I, I found that when we had control, commission, the people made more money because they were there every day. It was more of a business. Now I, uh, I'm renting booths. So they're independent contractors, so they're pretty much free to do what they want to do. And I'm not so sure that we're ready to be free like that. We need guidance. Okay, someone, someone to tell us well, you got to go to work. Okay, that's that's what I think. Uh, the reason why we fail in business as a people is because we have to have this guidance. We can't do it on our own. I think that we need to develop a business thinking, you know, transform our way of thinking. Mm -hmm. Like most of the other groups that come to America, they come and they open businesses up, okay? Uh, we're the only ones that don't control the businesses in our neighborhoods. So we haven't accepted business concepts. Business is not when I get ready to do it. It's every day. And I, and I think too, <clears throat> when it comes down to vision, when it comes down to vision, just as, as a people, as, as, uh, much less those who are, of us who are, are in business in general, it comes to think of where, the Bible says what, 
where there's no vision, my people perish. Okay, and the thing is that we, we, we have no, there's no unity of vision relative to what we, what we have to offer and or expect to receive from what, what we do as a, as a community, um, uh, much less as a, as a, as a uh, business itself. And so when we begin to um, um, trust each other and be able to uh, support each other in, in a lot of different ways, I think you'll, you'll, you'll see a lot, a lot more, uh, uh, co many more cohesive things moving forward uh, as, as those business. And uh, um, I think it's something that we, we definitely lack uh, as, a, as, a, as a community. You know, uh, in the industry itself, again, you're speaking of the independence, uh, that was a that was a that was a major setback. Not just for us, just in the industry itself. Just beauty, beauty as as it's spoken, and <clears throat> um, for for the business owner, it becomes a a, a a difficult challenge to be able to maintain and 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 present yourself in some some cohesive manner to the public when you have again all the independent thinking in in that one spot. So it, it's the mod you, had, you had to modify to adjust, to adjust to that, you know, to be able to actually uh, uh, re remain relevant, you know, in, in uh, uh, you know, any given day or you know uh, situation. So uh, uh, that's that's ongoing. That's ongoing. We need to recycle dollars in our community. Okay, that's a fact. Okay. Uh, all of these things like trust, um, support from our own in our community. I know there's, we have a tendency not to be loyal to our own. Uh, even in the hair business, there are salons, say there's a salon on, on Washington. I don't want to have to say the name of it. But it's not owned by, by us, but it's, it is supported quite a bit by us. Yes, people yes, with a lot of money. Our people with money, they have this tendency to want to go to to just to fit in. Mm -hmm. I, I don't think we should be trying to fit in. I think we should be trying to develop our own, not fit in in any place. Uh, that's precisely why I wanted to bring the Beverly Hills atmosphere to Altadena so the people in Altadena, our people, wouldn't have to go to Beverly Hills. So that we wouldn't have to fit and, in. You know, and I think also too, we as the consumer um, have to give some considerations to to those few businesses that we have as well, because we tend to be a lot harder on ourselves than we are on any. So if a, if a, if a, a black business plumber, say for instance, comes in and doesn't get it right the first time, he's done. But we will we'll, we'll call up five other others and, and, and give them chance after chance after chance. So we have to be a little bit more, just you know, a little bit more considerate in that regard. So not, not to lessen your expectation. We want, we, we, we expect to get the service that, we, that we're paying for. But at the same time, it's like, okay, um, if, if it's wrong, call them on it, give, give them an opportunity. You know, and uh, if he doesn't get it right next time, that's fine. But, but again, at least, at least give the opportunity for us to, to, to better ourselves and to, and to give us the service that we're that we're that we're requesting, you know, that full sense. Um, uh, back to the vision, talking about the, why businesses, black businesses, is struggling because again, there is no vision. We don't realize that we even need to have that because when you talk about recycling black dollars, it's like, boy, what do you recycle? We don't have a black bank. We don't have a black supermarket. We don't have a black uh, 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 whatever. There are so many different types of businesses out here that we don't have. So we can't recycle it for the most part. So we definitely need to see that as, as something that um, is a necessity in our communities to be able to be able for those of us who really want to support uh, uh, each other to be able to do it. You know, uh, we uh, I, I, you have to go and you have to go out of your way. You have to go out of your way. I mean, to find a, a like just a beauty salon, to find a, a good a black beauty salon. Someone's going to do what you want with another. You have to go out your way, or uh, be it. Uh, any type of business, you gotta go out of your way. A bit of uh, a dentist or a optometrist or, or whatever. It's like we're there. It's a handful of us, but you got you gotta go uh, jump out the yellow pages and jump on Google or somewhere to, to, to find us. You know, um, but there again, give give us the opportunity. You know, give a person the opportunity. If they blow it, you at least try. It. 
you at least made an effort to, to, to make that happen. And then as that begins and continues to, to, to move forward, uh, you'll, you'll, you'll start seeing more businesses open up because a lot of folks don't open up businesses because they know we're not, we're not coming. We're not, it's we, I can't rely on my people to do it, to, to support. Sonny, he was, he went to, you know, he's a graduate of Wharton. He went to Wall Street and he's one of the founders of a, a company, a black firm. And they expanded and he's, he's in Chicago now. Um, my oldest son is in theater arts. So he's in his own business. <laughs> he's in his own business. You know, okay. And, yeah. Um, so the association brings about assimilation. Mm -hmm. Okay. Most likely, hopefully, exactly. if yeah. they see it and accept it, right. it's like lawyers usually produce lawyers in the family, and doctors usually produce fat doctors, and nurses usually have nurses in the family, or they marry doctors. You know. So right. business people, if you're a business person and your family's in business, usually you have the tendency to go into business. Right. Right. I have two children, uh, a son, he, he's, he's not in business, but he's, he's working, <laughs> that's mm -hmm, good. Mm -hmm. um, my daughter is, can't wait to get into business, she sees her whole thing is that I, I don't even work for anyone, I want to work for myself. Okay. I say, well, you know, that, that's good, so she has to figure out which, which niche exactly. she wants to get involved in, you know. Um, and, uh, you know, that's just, yeah, you hope that, you hope it seeps, seeps yeah. into the ears, and you definitely try to, uh, uh, impacting the best you can with, with whatever, you, whatever you have and, and, and try to protect them from the mistakes and things you've made as well. Right. You know, uh, best you can. I mean, yeah, you got, probably got bumped to get somebody. You know? yeah. uh, well, my, my salon is Cobert, Cobert uh, Hair Studios. Uh, it's in uh, uh, Pasadena on New York and Allen. And you actually kind of downsized into a, a, a little smaller, smaller spot and just really trying to just service the community that we're, that we're in. And I have uh, five operators, and we're just doing what we do and enjoying it. Trying to reproduce, oh. trying to reproduce. We have 18 people here, okay. yeah, 18 operators. And um, you know how they come and go, yeah. you know, artists, have a tendency to come and go. I'm looking to reproduce so that uh, we can maintain the industry. Yes. We had quality control, quality control. If the hair wasn't shampooed right, back to the bowl. And they, they went back to the bowl, got shampooed again. Yes. And if they put the wrong, if they didn't straighten it right, they didn't do it the Lawrence and Goat way, they go back to the bowl because you'd have to. You can't send these people out the door. Yeah, they, they, no, represent, they represent, they represent yes. Lawrence and Kobe, yes, yes, right? Yes. So it was Lawrence and Kobe they were representing. Yeah. This is a multi-billion dollar industry. And one of the one of the challenges is to get get the, the mindset of the people to see it from an industry perspective opposed to a salon perspective. Because when they come when they come and see that how not only how much they can contribute, but also to all the things that are offered to them in this industry to be able to make and do whatever they want to do uh, with, the, with the art. It, 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 cha it, ch it changes the, the way they approach it from that, from that standpoint. It's, it's a hard sell, but at the same time, right. it, it is, it is it, it, that's what it is. So what we, what we tried to promote, again, from the beginning was, again, industry. It's like, this, we, we, we want to we make a statement that speaks uh, much broader than this one little circle that we have here. And, and actually impacts the, uh, those of us in the industry.